Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice quintic equation. Something that looks fairly simple, right? X to the fifth power equals one. But we're gonna be solving for all solutions and I'll be presenting some interesting methods. So now where does this problem come from? This is actually a video response to a video made by Black Pen, Red Pen, I think about a month ago maybe. I can't remember exactly, but I'm gonna share the link down below so you can take a look and compare the methods because I'm going to be using different methods. Okay, cool, cool, let's proceed. So we're gonna start with x to the fifth power equals one. This is probably the most basic, easiest, simplest quintic equation that you can ever get, right? Maybe another one would be x to the fifth equals negative one, but this one is even simpler, is it? Little bit. And obviously there's an obvious, obvious solution, which is x equals one, right? I mean, everybody hopefully knows that by taking the fifth root. We can use different approaches here, but the one that I pick is actually particularly, I think, interesting because it kind of uses a really nice idea, which I'm gonna talk about. But in order to be able to do that, let's go ahead and try to factor this equation first because that's the critical part. So first, I'm gonna subtract one from both sides and turn this into zero. So x to the fifth minus one, this is what I wanna factor so that when I set the factor is equal to zero, I can set each factor equal to zero separately. And what do you think this is gonna look like? A quadratic times a quadratic, a linear. Obviously we know x equals one is a solution, so x minus one needs to be one of the factors. At this point, you can do a couple different things. You can do polynomial division. You can do, you know, other methods, um, synthetic, whatever, some type of long division, short division, whatever, and get the other factor, which is supposed to be a quartic, and then, you can try to factor that quartic into quadratics, maybe an other linear factor, but all qu quartics should be factored into two quadratics, right? Hopefully. Now, let's see what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and factor this, but to be able to do that, do you know the formula for a to the n minus b to the n? There's actually a formula that looks like this. One of the factors is a minus b because obviously, uh, a minus b divides a to the n minus b to the n. You can tell by replacing b with a in the original and you'll get zero, all right? And the other factor is basically formed by looking at the first factor. Now, like what do I need to multiply by to get a to the power n? That should be a to the power n minus one. And then this is a minus sign. This should be a plus sign and so on and so forth. But where does that come from? Let's talk about it. So I'm gonna do the following. I'm gonna subtract x to the fourth and then I'm gonna add x to the fourth, and then I'm gonna subtract x to the third, and then I'll add x to the third, and then I will subtract x squared, and then add x squared, and then subtract x, and then add x, and actually, it should give me minus one at the end. And this should be balanced, because look at this. These terms all cancel out. These two, these two, these two, and these two. And we end up with x to the fifth minus one at the end, which is kind of cool, but obviously you don't want them factor uh, canceled out because we need them, come on. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and factor this by grouping. That's the main idea. I mean, this is something that I've been using over and over. If we know that X equals one is a solution, that means X minus one is a factor, right? And if X minus one is a factor, we can kind of split the polynomial, this one, into pieces, uh, making sure that every two terms is divisible by x minus one, make sense? So to make it like you start with x to the fifth and what should I subtract so that this is a multiple of x minus one? Obviously this should be x minus one times x to the fourth, right? Because we have x to the fifth. So the next term you're gonna write is gonna be minus x to the fourth. And you keep doing it until you get to the very end. And because x minus one is a factor, this should always work out. Now we can factor out x to the fourth times x minus one, and then x cubed times x minus one, and then x squared times x minus one, and then x times x minus one, and finally one times x minus one. That's the critical part. Even if there's, uh, you don't have to, even if you don't have to write it, you still have to, um, it's better to write it, come on. You know, it's better if you write it there because that way you get to see, otherwise it's gonna be a blank. Now, x minus one is a common factor. We knew that, right? The other factor, which is the, ta-da, the core tick is coming up. Ready? 
x to the fourth, if you underline all these common factors, everything else is the second factor, x to the fourth plus x to the third plus x squared plus x plus one equals zero. Awesome. I think I already made a video about this a while ago, long time ago. I don't know if I use the same method, but from here, obviously, you get x equals one. We already know that. That's not very interesting, is it? Let's go ahead and take a look at the other factor. Now, this is where we differ in our solution methods. I think also for finding the quartic factor, because I believe he used uh, polynomial division, I could probably use it. Uh, I could probably call that synthetic division. You can go ahead and check out the video and then let us know what you think. So my method is going to depend on symmetric equations. Now, notice that the coefficient of x to the fourth and x to the first are both one. And these are the same. And this is in the middle. Nice. What's in the middle? x squared. Good. Let's divide everything by that. Divide by x squared, divide by x squared, divide by x squared. But of course, you first have to establish, I know some people are going to be like, come on, you need to check the domain, blah, blah. I mean, you know that x does not equal zero, right? Come on. You know that. Okay. So we checked it. Good. Now we have x squared plus x plus 1 plus 1 over x, if you simplify, plus 1 over x squared equals 0. This is nice because I can now bring these two together, right? And then bring these two together. And then we're going to have to leave the one alone, which is fine. Now, we're going to go ahead and take one more step to write this expression as x plus 1 over x squared minus 2. But you may not see what I'm talking about. So let me go ahead and square the x plus 1 over x first to show you where this comes from. So I'm not leaving any uh, blanks. So if you square this, you're going to get x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 2 times x times 1 over x, right? Write everything down, the black pen, red pen way. And then cross out the x's. And then you're going to end up with an identity for this, which is x squared plus 1 over x squared equals x plus 1 over x quantity squared minus the two that comes from here. You get the idea? If I gave you this identity, you would probably say, some people would say at least, I know for sure, at least one person would say, where on earth does this come from? How did you come up with this? Okay, I, I would say, use your brain and think about it, okay? So anyways, we can go ahead and replace this with that. And that's going to give us what? x plus 1 over x squared minus 2. That replaces this. And then plus x plus 1 over x plus 1 equals 0. And then this is the magic or maybe the math magic happens. We have a hocus pocus process and it's called substitution. We're going to call this something. How about t? t is my favorite variable in drink these days. And now we get t squared plus t minus 1 equals 0. Beautiful. That turns the quartic into a quadratic. Can we do this with any quartic? Not easily as this, but if it's symmetrical, sure. Now we can go ahead and solve it using the quadratic formula. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared 1 plus minus 4ac. That's a 5. Uh-oh. The golden ratio seems to appear from out of nowhere, right? And then... We get something like this, and you can definitely split it up into two solutions, negative 1 plus root 5 over 2, and then the other one is negative 1 minus root 5 over 2. Do we choose, like we can choose the positive solution? No, it doesn't matter. There's no requirement. But what, what matters is that x plus 1 over x is equal to these. So let me take one of these because this is a lot of work. Come on, you know that I'm lazy. I'm not going to do the whole thing because... You can help me, right? So let's just use that one. t is equal to x plus 1 over x, right? And that is equal to 1 minus root 5 over 2. And now we can go ahead and solve this as a quadratic. Let's go ahead and first multiply both sides by x, right? That gives us x squared plus 1 equals 1 minus root 5 over 2 times x. Let's put everything on the same side so we can get a full quadratic. Now, at this point, you can kind of negate and add. It's the same idea because this looks better, don't you think? With a plus sign, things are more positive, and I like to uh, stay positive, okay? Cool, cool. This is another quadratic, quadratic within quadratics. Okay, now, let's go ahead and solve it, and from here, we get x equals negative b, which is going to be negated like 1 minus root 5 over 2, 
plus minus the square root of b squared. Uh-oh, I need to square that radical. Minus 4ac, minus 4, all over 2. Nice. And now what am I going to do? 1 minus root 5 over 2. Plus minus, inside the radical, we're getting the following. We're going to square the radical in the numerator, which is going to give me 5 plus 1. Minus 2 root 5. Let me show my work so people don't complain about it. And also, it's better for people who are new to these things. We can't make assumptions, right? Like everybody knows algebra real well. Okay, that's perfectly fine if you're new to this. And then we can kind of simplify this a little bit. This is 6. Uh, divide everything by 2 here. So that's going to give me... And I could probably simplify a little bit more. But let's just do this for now. That's going to give me a 6. Oh, by the way. Minus 16 is going to come from here, so like this, we can just make it disappear. And 6 minus 16 is going to be negative 10. Uh-oh, Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> what is that problem? That problem is actually uh, we get a negative number, right? And when we divide by 4, uh, we could probably just, anyways, whatever, I'll just write it like this. It's actually better, you know why? Because I can just square root it. So like this, and then like that. And then all the, like they have a common denominator, square root of four is two and two times two is four. You get the idea? I took that two, two divide, one half divided by two is one fourth. Okay, hopefully this makes sense, but what do you do with the negative sign? You kind of need to negate it and use the I, use your eyes, okay? And times I, that should give you two of the solutions. But that's a cortic, there are two more solutions which you have to find. Let's go ahead and check out the complex solutions, ta da da, from Wolfram Alpha. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye bye.